Hello everyone, this is Dr. Bob Browner recording uh, coronavirus, community coronavirus update number 40. Uh, and today we'll talk about the latest numbers from local and international, uh, what's a reliable source of information, and is that really a plan? So, uh, still like last week, uh, the most of the uh, cases of spread are happening through the middle of the country, mostly, uh, especially rural areas, college towns, and so it's uh, sort of our turn in the middle, unfortunately. Um, if you look at uh, how each state's doing, unfortunately, Nebraska has joined the top eight for the worst uh, cases of spread. And unfortunately, our numbers, if you look at infection rate, we're still going up. Uh, so we may uh, rise in the rankings, unfortunately, in a bad way the next, uh, next few days or few weeks. Um, most of the cases, it, it's a combination of two things. It's the college towns like uh, University of Nebraska Kearney, University of Lincoln, probably to some extent Omaha and Lincoln and some other uh, places. And then, of course, rural Nebraska, especially uh, northern and central Nebraska, seems to be going up quite a bit. Um, and the, what's concerning to me is not just the cases, but the fatality rate is going up. And why would the fatality rate go up uh, and, and not exactly in line with the number of infections? Well, here's number of infections, here's fatalities. Well, the meat processing plant outbreaks, a lot of those were younger workers, so probably less likely to die. Unfortunately, they came home and were in three generation households, so sometimes infected their parents, and that's where a lot of the fatalities came from. Uh, this, this rise was actually the summer premature reopening where people came rushing back to bars and restaurants and spread it, but those were mostly young people in their 20s and 30s, so it didn't result in a high fatality rate. Uh, now it's the college kids in rural, and so I don't think it's the college kids causing this thing, it's rural Nebraska is the source of these fatalities now. Uh, and, and nobody's uh, uh, free from this, unfortunately. So unfortunately, we had uh, our first physician die in uh, North Platte, um, coronavirus, Dr. Leland Lambert, he's so sad to hear that. And so I think our, our fatality rates are going to go up because of the demographics of who's getting infected now. It's an older population is the problem. Uh, people always complain, you know, is the United States the worst? Well, we're doing bad, although we're not the worst, uh, unfortunately, fortunately or unfortunately. Uh, we're probably going to cross 200,000 fatalities uh, by the end, by in the next week. Uh, however, total fatalities is not the measure to compare a comp country. It's the number of people who've died as a proportion of your population. U.S. Is, is, is one of the worst, but it's not the worst. Brazil's done worse. United Kingdom, Spain, whose numbers are actually going up dramatically, so they're going to unfortunately get bad again. Peru's probably one of the worst countries as far as how it's hurt, it been hit in Sweden. So if you want to look at who's good, you need to look at this. And, and uh, I wouldn't count India because India just was delayed. They'll, they'll probably eventually have the highest fatality number of fatalities, but they're also a really, really big country. I would look at the rates of Germany and Japan. Uh, these are two developed countries that are economic competitors that got it right. Uh, Germany with only 11 per 100,000, Japan with only 1.2 because they're so good about wearing masks, basically. And so if, if the United States had done as well as Germany or, or Japan, we'd only have four to 40,000 deaths instead of the close to 200,000 we'll have by next week and so these are the countries that got it right these are the ones to look at look, look listen to and copy your uh, ideas from because they're the ones who got it right not any of the other countries uh, Lancaster County if you look at trend over time um, our numbers are going up dramatically although so far it still seems to be mostly uh, college kids in the prisons uh, which are hopefully an isolatable population won't affect the rest of the community our biggest concern is data glitches and so these big holes here there are data glitches at test Nebraska or the Health and Human Services and so three times in three weeks we've had bad data that got delayed and uh, there was an asterisk even on our health department report yesterday saying we're not sure how good or bad our data is so take it with a grain of salt essentially so we still still have really bad data glitches and that's why we use the seven day moving average which is the black line. Uh, if it gets any worse we're actually probably going to have to use a 14 day moving average. So here in Lincoln, uh, hopefully we've kept it mostly isolated to colleges and keep it out of schools. We still haven't had any within the school uh, spread so keep our fingers crossed uh, and hopefully it's not spreading the rest of the community. Uh, Douglas and Sarpy County, you know, they've got a general downward trend after their mask ordinance, but they do have Creighton and UNO, so likely do have some college spread as well. And again, we've got our data glitches. These holes are where Test Nebraska got messed up or Health and Human Services got messed up. And then outstate Nebraska, if you delete uh, Omaha and Lincoln counties, uh, outstate Nebraska is also on its, on its way up as well. And again, those same data glitches. So. So the last, next thing I want to talk about is reliable sources of information. And so one of the biggest thing, problems with this pandemic is people forwarding stuff that's just completely off base with no credibility. Uh, but people forward it even though it's completely off and even sometimes just transparently off with anybody with even a base amount of knowledge. So this one uh, was sent to me recently, this face mask, the truth. If you read down here, it says the only viruses that move through the air are, are Ebola, smallpox, and tuberculosis. That is so wrong, it's ridiculous, because tuberculosis isn't a virus, it's a bacteria. Anybody with basic biology knowledge would know that. Uh, and yes, there are many other viruses that spread through there. They missed the most infectious one, which is measles, actually. Uh, and so this is completely wrong. So this whole thing is, is off base. 
So what is a credible source of information? So one of my frustrations is people keep forwarding me things saying, what do you think about this dramatic thing? And I'll look at who wrote it and I'll say, well, who is this person? Do you have any credentials whatsoever? You can verify any of that with a quick Google search. So if you, a reliable source will come from a, someone with public health credentials. Uh, usually it's a combination of MD, MPH, and PhD, often two of the three actually. And so that is a credible source. People with those information, those credentials, those people know what they're talking about. They actually have the training to understand data and at least know the difference between a virus and a bacteria. Uh, do they have a track record? Uh, so if it's some person with his own shop set up in the middle of nowhere, why are they on their own? Well, that should tell you something. Do they have an academic appointment? Have they had a governmental job? Have they worked as part of a health system? And ideally, they would have managed and been at the top of one of these systems. Uh, last is, have they had occupied an elected position? Because if nobody else in healthcare listens to them, why should you? So are they in the National Academy of Medicine? Have they been active? They've been elected to positions in their medical society? Are they on a board of directors somewhere? Because if nobody else should trust, trust them, you should neither. All of this is easily verified with a quick Google search. So before you even bother reading the whole thing, figure out who wrote it and see if they meet some of these criteria. So an example is one of my go-to sources now is, the, is, is Dr. Osterholm from SIDRAP at the University of Minnesota. This is my Mowing the Lawn podcast that I do right now. It's about an hour long, but he pretty much covers everything and he's very sharp. Uh, he's got an academic appointment. He has both two of those credentials, MPH and PhD. He's on a board of regents, so somebody trusted him enough to put him on a board of regents at a college. He's worked for the Department of State and the CDC. He's got publications. This is a credible source of public health information. Politicians generally, unfortunately, are not. Uh, and so quit listening to politicians and quit listening to random forwarded stuff. Find somebody who's a credible source. Uh, another example, Dr. Fauci. He's so credible that Harvard Medical School uh, last week for their grand rounds asked him to be their speaker. So Harvard goes to him as a source. Uh, and I've actually included uh, both these links to the SIDRAP podcast and this Harvard Medical School grand rounds. This is basically Fauci re reviewing all the latest evidence we know about coronavirus right now. It's uh, worth your time. It's another hour. Um, one of the things that I th was, thought was really helpful is this Lancet study which I've also put a link to in the notes section, uh, basically looking at how layers, and if you add them up, uh, yes, a mask is not perfectly protective, but it's 85% protective. W at least three feet, and then preferably even six feet, at least three feet gives you 82% protection. One layer by itself is not helpful, but when you add two layers together, together now you're hitting 98, 99% effective. And if you add a third layer, uh, such as being outside, for example, if you're outside mask, you've got almost zero chance. And so two or three of these is enough to protect you. Uh, and so so uh, these are highly effective, and so this whole mass stuff still just boggles my mind. There, the evidence has gotten so solid right now. No credible public health person thinks that masks are a bad thing. They all say it's a good thing. Uh, other places, uh, Johns Hopkins Public Health Pond Call. These are shorter, 12 to 15 minute podcasts. If you just want something short, this is a good another good source. Uh, Johns Hopkins is one of the top schools of public health in the world. Obviously, they're going to give you good information. Uh, the last thing I'm going to talk about is what is the plan. Unfortunately, there is no plan. So uh, Dr. Osterholm on Meet the Press basically said, you know, unfortunately, we're going to have a, a tough winter uh, because there is no national plan to do anything. And even in, the, in Nebraska, most states or a lot of states don't even have a plan either. In our state, unfortunately, Nebraska is also a state that has no plan to stop the coronavirus. Uh, there are some states uh, in the Northeast and in, and in the West uh, that do have good uh, plans. I think Colorado, uh, Wyoming is a red state that I think is doing pretty well right now. Some states have plans, ours does not. Uh, and it's frustrating to us health professionals because we know that there is a very good way to control coronavirus. We actually literally know how to do this. We've known it for a long time, but now we've got enough information. We know specifically what we do for coronavirus. So uh, since we don't have a state plan, there's a chance we could develop them at the community level. Uh, Dr. Ali Khan is working on an eight-week plan that's still in draft phase. I think he's going to release it soon. But it's going to have elements like, well, one, one thing to do we need is we need better test turnaround. Uh, if you don't know who's sick for four days because you're waiting on a test, that's not, not just simply not adequate. We need better testing. We need better information systems. But once you get a positive, you need to get you, your a case contact person needs to get them isolated in a short amount of time so they're not spreading it around. We need to, to track start tracking these numbers. What's the percent of people uh, who are contacted and isolated? And also things like the populations wearing a mask are, are more than 85%. If we could get over 85% of people wearing a mask, coronavirus literally would stop. Even our CDC director, uh, Redfield, said that a few months back, that basically if everybody were to wear a mask, we would stop coronavirus in less than eight weeks. Um, so Nebraska, we still have those uh, reporting glitches. You can go check those in the paper, unfortunately. And I don't know why we're moving to phase four, reopening and not doing other things when our hospital numbers and, and fatalities and our cases are all rising. Uh, unfortunately, Nebraska has no plan, but hopefully uh, communi communities will put their own plans together. Um, 
Nebraska, the, the DHHS site, though, does add, has added turnaround so you can see where it is at the state level. What boggles my mind is why are we putting millions of state dollars into Test Nebraska, which still has a three-and-a-half-day turnaround. We have Nebraska-developed places, Nebraska Medicine, Nebraska Public Health Ad, Physicians Lab, which is a local-owned, uh, Nebraska-owned physicians lab. Why aren't we putting the money in them? Because they've got good turnaround. They can actually get us where we want to go. Let's quit wasting money on Test Nebraska and put it on these folks who can actually get a decent test turnaround. Um, lastly, you know, the mask, we got to get people wearing masks. This is how things spread. Um, one thing I'll point out is this was a volleyball game up in northeast Nebraska a couple weeks ago. Uh, guess what happened? Well, here we have northeast Nebraska having its big outbreak. So when people are going, uh, unfortunately, to volleyball games, golf scrambles, uh, weddings with no masks on, this is what you're going to get. And so I'm really worried that our fatality rate in our rural areas is going to go up dramatically in the next month or two. Herd immunity. So we'll talk about that. Apparently there's still people who think this is a good idea. Uh, if, if we were to actually get on board the herd immunity bandwagon in Nebraska, uh, it, getting that many people infected in that amount of time, we would literally double our hospital capacity, which means uh, we, we can't do that, of course, so people would die, not just coronavirus and everything else. We would have fatality rates up in the 15 and 35,000 rate. The good thing is Nebraska is not going to do that because there's enough of us who aren't going to jump on that bandwagon. So even if our governor jumps on the bandwagon and there's a certain percentage of the population jumping on the bandwagon, most of us won't. Uh, so in the Fauci article, he talked about how 30% of Americans still thinks coronavirus is a hoax. So, well, if 30% are going to go for herd immunity, at least we wouldn't exceed our hospital capacity. Uh, it would mean our fatalities would be in the two to 3,000 range, which is kind of sad. I don't want two to 3,000 Nebraskans to die. Uh, but without a state plan and uh, people still thinking this is a hoax, uh, I guess they're just going to, they themselves and their population will go to herd immunity and well, a lot of them will die, unfortunately. Uh, you know, and it's not that we're doing, I don't see why people think we're doing too much here. Uh, look at all the things we do to stop highway fatalities. So in Nebraska, we have anywhere from 200 to 250 highway fatalities a year. Uh, we do things to stop that. We have seat belts and we have airbags and we have laws like you can't speed, you can't run a light, you can't drive drunk. Uh, we enforce those laws to keep those fatalities in the 200 to 250 range. Uh, we've already doubled that with coronavirus so far, and we're probably going to end up with 10 times that rate. Uh, so just think all the things we do to, to limit highway fatalities, why aren't we doing the, something similar for coronavirus? So uh, at the end of the day, though, what can you do? Um, well, again, I keep telling people I would not go sit in a restaurant or a coffee shop where people are not wearing masks. And if you walk into a restaurant and coffee shop, that's typically what you see. So don't go in there. So here's an example from South Korea, one person infecting 27 others. However, that doesn't mean you shouldn't go out. So I was surprised uh, a few days ago, uh, someone I know said, Hey, I haven't been out to a restaurant since March. How about all of you? And it was surprising to me how many people have not been out to a restaurant. Well, we go out regularly. You should you should get out. Uh, you, uh, some restaurants and bars, they've taken a lot of hit. Some of them have created a safe environment for you. Go out and reward those businesses with your business and with your dollars. So this is my wife and I and our dog Maggie down at the Piedmont Bistro. Last night, we walked down the road. Here they've got a nice setup for us. We uh, actually ran into some of our neighbors out there, so it was a great way to be social. Uh, this is a perfectly safe environment. Uh, Saturday, we, we rode our bikes around town and stopped by the hub. This is also a well-spaced environment. Uh, these teachers chairs are much more than six feet out. It was beautiful outside. Uh, we had a nice, nice, nice dinner and a beer. Uh, it was great. So I get out and go to these places. I still like the winery setups that we've got going around. So I really highly encourage you to get out and, and be active. But one, uh, you need the physical activity. You need the social interaction. Uh, the, these people need your business. Uh, we've got a couple months of good, we uh, good weather in the fall. Get out and enjoy yourselves. Uh, so, and again, I keep telling people, quit focusing on silver and the silver bullet. We, we hopefully will have a vaccine in three to six months, but until then, we got to focus on our silver buckshot. We know what that is. Wear a mask. Outside's better than in. Keep your distance. Wash your hands and uh, focus on the smaller gatherings. So hopefully it's helpful to you. And just like I talked about critical sources, look for those credentials. I have an MD. I have an MPH from Johns Hopkins. I actually do run a health system. I have been elected to position. Uh, but again, disclaimer, these are my opinions, not necessarily all of them, although I hope most agree with most of what I'm saying. Uh, but hopefully this is helpful to you. And uh, 